Good day, everyone. I pray today that you know that the Father loves you and is jealous for you. The jealousy of God is not a jealousy that I want to protect you, but more a jealousy that I want to give you the very best that I have. Typically, when we think of jealousy, we think of possession. Yes, we are chosen by God, yes. But at the same time, jealousy becomes a vile thing, an evil thing. I know many couples and folks that I've counseled over the years who he's just jealous. So I don't want you to talk to that person. I don't want you doing this. Well, because I want you for me, which becomes an issue of consuming. Whereas the father's jealousy, remember he says, I am a jealous God. It's the idea that I want to give you everything that I have. Therefore, I am jealous for you, that you may receive everything I have for you. And so the Father blesses us that way and encourages us to make sure that we're walking with him because of he has his jealousy for us. Jealousy to give, not to consume, not to have us bound down, but for freedom. John has been helping us with this. In John chapter 2, Verse 15, he says, don't love the world, the cosmos, all of that out there behind me, the cosmos. What's the issue here with the cosmos? Well, Jesus says it so well, the God of this world. The God of this world, yes, God owns it all, yes, that is true. He made it, yes. But the enemy has come and disrupted everything through sin. And so the enemy draws us into himself, he wants us to worship him. But Isaiah and we know that he wants to be worshipped like God, be God. That's again, this, I'm jealous because I want this as opposed to I want to give you. But John helps us here in verse 16 because he helps us understand a couple practical things about the world and three things that distract us from the Father. He says this, for all that is in the world, one, the lust of the flesh, Two, the uh, lust of the eyes. Three, the boastful pride of life. They're not from the Father, but from the world, the cosmos. That is where the enemy is ruling. But what's John saying to us? We well, use some curious words here. Typically, we define the word uh, epithumia, two words, epithumia, in the Greek as lust. But it's not just lust. Lust is, I want to have this, I've got to have this. But no, the idea behind epithumia is the idea that this is my main desire. This is my craving. This is what I have affection for. Eros is purely sexual. I want to consume that. That's where the idea of lust comes from. I want to have this as a part of me. Whereas instead, epithemia is those things that I have desires for. I have things I want, I crave. John goes on and says, the epithemia of the flesh, the sarks. Now, the idea behind sarks, our flesh, is that we're but dust. And the idea there behind dust is that Satan has been cursed to eat the dust of the earth. So what does Satan design for us as uh, Frangipane says, he desires our dust. He wants this, our sarks, our fleshliness, our fleshliness without God. And so then he goes on, John, and helps us. He says, this is all from the world. First, the lust of the flesh, our sarks, the things that we desire. Now, this isn't just, I desire food and sustenance. No, these are the things I crave after. Those things that you really, really want. They have nothing to do with God at all. But it is the enemy tantalizing you. The enemy saying, hey, come take this. Come, you will enjoy this. Remember Adam and Eve in the garden? Ah, come, take this. This will make you wise. You will enjoy this. You will become like God. We begin to desire it because our flesh desires it, not the spirit. Our flesh says, consume. Oh, let me do this. Even go further. Epithumia becomes those things that we become addicted to. 
We become addicted to the lifestyle, language, etc. Those things that we become addicted to. The next thing John says, the lust of the eyes, the epithumia of the eyes. Ah, my eyes see it. Often, even as grown Christians, we become like two and three-year-olds in the grocery store. I see this cereal, I want it. Or we're in the toy store, I got to have this toy. So we throw our tantrum because our eyes see it. We want it. We don't know why we want it. We want it because our eyes make us feel like I've got to have that. It will make me fresh and new. Watch TV occasionally. And all the things, the lust of the eyes, the epithemia of the eyes. You've got to look this way, talk this way. You've got to put on this makeup. Men, you've got to try this shaving cream. You've got to try this deodorant. You've got to try Axe. You've got all these things. Why? Because it is the lust of the eyes which comes through our nostrils to make us desire because my eyes see it, I want it. All the things we see in beauty, we go, oh yes, my eyes delight in this. But is that the delight that the Father wants you to have? Yes, there's nothing wrong with appreciating the beauty of each other, the beauty of God's creation. But when we start talking lust of the eyes, when we look at what is going on in our creation, we're not just talking about trees and landscapes and seascapes, etc. We're talking about the enemy trying to make our eyes get us into lusting. I desire that. I desire that for eros. So we move from epithemia to eros. Ooh, yes. What do we do? One day, some packages arrived at my church. I look at them, and I look at the envelope, and it says adult content inside. Well, I knew what adult content meant, and I knew exactly where it came from. So I went online, found the company that sent it, and said, you will immediately take me off your mailing list. I don't know how you got it. Then I called the vitamin company that I use, said, you guys sold my mailing list. I'm not using you anymore. Then one of my sisters walked in the church, one of my folk from my shepherd, uh, not shepherding team and accountability team. And they said, this came in the mail today. I need you to pray with me. Because what happens is the epithemia of the eyes becomes the lust of the eyes. John says, these things will lead you away. The third one is this, the boastful pride of life. Now, John isn't talking about being self-confident here. John is talking about the idea that your life centers around yourself. It is you. Everything about you are the person who boasts loudly. I have a dear friend. He's a wonderful man. Loves Jesus with all his heart, mind, and soul. But sometimes when I'm around him, I want to say, please stop. Because every conversation gets back to him who he is, what he has done, those kind of things. That is the boastful pride of life. Our lives, yes, we, as Paul says, we can boast, but we need to boast about Jesus. What is this Jesus is doing in and through us? We then remove ourselves from that. And so the idea there is, Alans and I, this is about me boasting, me letting you know how great, how wonderful I am. Whereas, who is great and wonderful? It is Christ in us, the hope of glory. And so Paul, uh, John says here, listen, folks, the epithemia of the eye, the epithemia of the flesh, the boastful pride of life, that it looks like you look who I am, what I have, all of these things. John sums it up so well this way. Are not from the Father. They're not from the Lord. The Father doesn't want us to be an epithemia, to be an eros, to brag about ourselves. It helps us to realize that all of these things come from the world. And who rules the world? Satan does. So the father is saying, folks, I want you to instead walk in the things that come from me. Father God, indeed, we bless you and thank you for this day. And Lord, help us to stay away from these things. Lord, our own epithemias, our own elisahans, that Father, we would instead glorify you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.
with less day, my dear friends.